What is the greatest superpower, you might ask yourself? Maybe it's laser vision, or cold breath, or the power to eat literally anything. Although that does somewhat sound like a really cool power to possess, it pales in comparison to stretchy powers, and I'll explain. Because this is a fucking Plastic Man video after all. But before doing so, I'll first want to explain who Plastic Man is before getting into the whole debacle of explaining why his powers are so rad to begin with. So first off, Patrick Eel O'Brien was a petty criminal doing almost any job that paid cash. One night he and his accomplice got hired to steal some documents from a chemical plant, and while recovering them, they were surprised by a guard and a shootout ensued. The guard was tragically killed, and a stray bullet hit a chemical container that spilled its contents on Eel. They all ended up running away from the scene of the crime, but O'Brien got thrown off the car when they judged his injuries too severe. Left to wander the streets while his powers developed, passers-by were deathly afraid of him, because to them, he looked like an absolute monster. And Patrick, looking at his situation, he saw no other way to get out of it than to attempt at suicide. However, before he could jump, he was interrupted by Woozy Winks, a recently released mental patient. Figures. The pair quickly decided to turn Eel's new powers into an opportunity for profit, and at the toss of a coin decided that he should become a superhero. Reborn as the shape-shifting hero, Plastic Man. From here, the sky was the limit for criminal-turned-superhero Patrick Eel O'Brien. Because after the JLA was accused of elitism, Superman and the other heroes decided to increase the membership to 12 and invited a number of metahumans to interview for a spot on the team, Plastic Man being one of them. He was eventually recruited in secret by Batman so that he could infiltrate the Injustice gang disguised as Joker. Three months after taking out that gang, he was officially announced as a new recruit along with Huntress, Steel and Zorio. Also, during this time, he turns himself into a dress to be worn by Big Barda during a Justice League training mission, and ultimately gets caught after she feels him move around. Oh, yeah. I completely forgot to mention that he's something of a pervert in this video, didn't I? I'm sorry. Not too long after this, we get to Tower of Babel, which was the whole event where Batman's plans to take down the Justice League came to light by Ra's al Ghul and used against everyone. In Plastic Man's case, they freeze and then shatter him into a number of pieces. Although he does recover like the rest of the heroes, he is traumatized by the experience and generally horrified that Batman, who he saw as a mentor, would plan this for him. As such, he votes that Batman be kicked off the League. And through this, Plastic Man over time somehow overcame his trauma managing to come out of it a better hero. Everything's going good for Plastic Man. He's watching his son, he's hanging out with woozy winks, and then he's turned into a thousand different pieces of himself to be scattered into the ocean and literally stays like this for 3,000 years. Now, the Justice League do end up saving him through some timey-wimey bullshit, but it doesn't really do him much good. Having suffered greatly by the extreme isolation and helplessness of spending several millennia in pieces on the ocean floor, he leaves the team for some time, choosing to dedicate himself to raising his son. But Plastic Man's got some huge commitment issues, so he just ends up rejoining the Justice League in a couple issues later. And essentially, almost melts alive, because after fighting a villain known as Prometheus, Plastic Man ended up getting exposed to a chemical agent that could somehow destabilize his powers. This required Plastic Man to concentrate harder on keeping his original form and caused any shape-shifting to be especially painful. And skipping ahead a bit during the Blackest Night event during the attack of the zombified Black Lanterns, a zombified vibe pulled Plastic Man's heart out, just as all the Black Lanterns do to absorb emotional energy to revive Necron. However, Plastic Man survives thanks to his weird physiology, which also makes his heart useless to vibe. Now, when you look back at Plastic Man's history, you can kind of tell that he's gone through it, but that he's especially durable. First, he was a mugger until getting splashed by acid to become a stretchy monstrosity, then saved by woozy winks to be reborn as a superhero, only to face many great hardships along the way, like getting turned into thousands of pieces for a millennia or two. Imagine the mental fortitude Plastic Man has. It's honestly incredibly endearing. Now, all right. This video was about why Plastic Man's powers are the greatest ever, so I'll give you off a few examples as to why. Essentially, Plastic Man's powers makes his body fluidic. He can become a solid, or he can be molecularly one of the most malleable living things in existence. He can stretch his body to immense lengths and proportions. He can separate his body into multiple divisions. He can make his body become constructs like an enormous hammer, a large bouncing ball, or essentially anything his mind can conceive. Plastic Man can flatten his body to slide through the most narrow of spaces. He can increase his body size to the height of a skyscraper building that's at least 70 stories tall. He can also stretch his body to completely envelop a skyscraper building that's at least 70 stories tall. And though he's quite durable when he chooses to be, Plastic Man is not beyond physical destruction, nor can he just take on Superman like willy-nilly. He still has his limits. Plastic Man is also immortal and does not age beyond the point he acquired his powers. It'd also take an incredible magnitude of power to actually destroy Plastic Man, because even exploding him down to molecular particles 
it won't actually permanently destroy Plastic Man. He will just eventually gather his particles and restore himself. Plastic Man can also survive the vacuum of space, though the deep cold would freeze him. But once brought back to a normal environment, he'd be completely fine all over again. Extreme heat can also cause Plastic Man to melt, although over time he would eventually be able to restore himself once he attains normal functioning temperature. However, he can't survive things like being hurled into the sun. That's just not possible. Plastic Man can also copy the appearance of others. He can also make himself incredibly strong by manipulating his musculature and body density. Plastic Man is also quite quick and nimble, but he isn't flash fast. Whew. Those were like a million reasons as to why his powers are the greatest, even though I know someone in the comments is going to say something like, no, Mullet Man, clearly omnipotence is the greatest power ever, and all I gotta say is shut the fuck up. Now, in plenty of stories, Plastic Man has been shown to go through the ringer, or has been shown mostly to be comic relief a lot of the time. So, most people don't know that Plastic Man can be particularly deadly if he really wanted to be, and could perhaps be one of the deadliest people in the DC universe. Like this one comic where Plastic Man literally suffocates the Flash with his elasticity. Or the time Plastic Man systematically released every inmate in Superman's Supermax prison just to free his son like the Plastic Chad he is. And the two references I'm going to use to explain this are Deceased and Flashpoint Plastic Man, where both of them are quite honestly the most brutal and raw I've ever seen Plastic Man ever be. So first off, Look at Zombie Plastic Man and tell me this isn't the most horrifying thing you've ever seen. It looks straight out of some kind of mythological horror, where Plastic Man, after getting infected by the anti-life equation, became a zombie turning into an absolute monstrosity, where he'd also turn himself into a zombified rubber moat, which killed the likes of Blue Devil, which is... I'll add, an insanely strong character along with a few more. Now this zombified Plastic Man does eventually die sort of, but only after the most enduring battle. And after seeing that grotesque version of Plastic Man, you might be thinking, okay, that's absolutely nightmare fuel, which means that the Flashpoint one can only get much worse, and from there, I would agree with you. Because the Flashpoint Plastic Man in this timeline never met Woozy Winks, meaning Plastic Man never reformed from being a criminal, which led him to become a supervillain, joining the Flashpoint's Legion of Doom, comprising of Black Manta, Plastic Man, Heat Wave, Killer Wasp, Lockup, Sportsmaster, and The Thinker. After a heist gone wrong thwarted by Cyborg, the Legion of Doom's leader Heatwave would be put to jail. But this wouldn't be for long as Plastic Man devised a way to break out his leader by hiding inside his cellmate long enough to burst out from his fucking mouth, turning the guy inside out. And if that wasn't enough of a horrifying thing to see, Plastic Man also fancies torture for his own amusement, never killing someone the same way twice. So he's hella creative. Like one time he morphed into barbed wire surrounding several prisoners and got small smaller and smaller till they all died utterly painful deaths. Along with stretching his body to such a fine point that he could stab through a person's eye and enter their body to destroy all their internal organs. And did I mention that he also fancies himself a cannibal in this timeline? No? Well, there you go. But he's not all dark and gritty. He also comes with the occasional comic relief, only it's completely dark humor. Like one instance, a villain amongst the group says to Plastic Man that he doesn't have a heart, so Plastic Man just rips them open and takes their heart and says, see? I do have a heart after all. Literally deranged. Now later on in the story, Heatwave ends up double-crossing Plastic Man by burning him alive, which is a complete no-no. And after being sent back to prison after another failed attempt at a heist, Heatwave would soon learn that he shouldn't have burnt that bridge literally and metaphorically. Because as we've established, Plastic Man can pretty much heal from anything. So as Heatwave talks with his new cellmate, the man begins to convulse, screaming out in pain, as blood seeps from his eyes and mouth. As Plastic Man explodes from within the man, showing Heatwave that everyone gets what's coming to them sooner or later. And if that doesn't show you why Plastic Man's powers are not only the greatest, but also a testament to why he might be one of the most dangerous characters in the DC Universe, I don't know what will. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.